Hello friends and welcome to my channel. Last time, as you know, I've assembled the first part of my future 6 degree of freedom 3D printed robotic arm, the gripper. Today I'd like to show you some detailed tests of this gripper operation. Ok, let's start with this tool for removing stuck 3D printed parts. It's quite lightweight, so there's no problem with it. And as you can see, the gripper holds it quite firmly. Now let's try something heavier, this screwdriver for example. And it's also not a problem for, for our gripper. This screwdriver is even more heavy, let's see how the gripper will cope with it. And as you can see it grasps it not strong enough to keep it still, but strong enough not to drop it. This egg has a polished slippery surface, let's try it. And it's quite heavy by the way. And as you can see it's not a big deal for the gripper. But of course this region of the fingers is most suited for grasping objects like this. As you can see the weight of the object is increasing. By the way I'm planning to make the payload of my future robotic arm not less than 2 kilos. And the gripper managed to cope with this can of beer with no problem. Now I want to pose a more difficult problem. Let's see if the gripper will manage to pick the objects from flat surfaces. Ok, not bad. This screwdriver is lighter, but it is also smaller and more difficult to grasp from flat surface. But it, the gripper has no problem with it. Now this tool is uh, quite flat. Let's see. But the gripper managed to pick it successfully. This small flat flash drive is to my mind impossible to be picked from the table. Let's see. But I was wrong. Not from all configurations. Only from this one. Ok, this object is definitely impossible for the gripper like this, but for the sake of experiment let's try. Probably this time I was right. And from this configuration also.
Alright, let's get back to heavy objects. This brushless motor weights 1 kilo and probably it's too heavy for this gripper. Besides, its surface is quite slippery. Let's try again. As you know, gripper fingers have tactile sensors. Their reaction increases proportionally to the force applied to them. After this reaction reaches some margin, actuator stops. So I've decided to increase this margin. Let's see if this will help to increase the strength of the grip. And to my surprise it did help. Now as you can see the gripper squeezes the motor strong enough. Let's repeat the experiment. And it worked again. Now let's try with these parts of the fingers. So I can regulate the strength of the grip a little bit in such a way. But I can also regulate the strength of the grip by regulating the top of the actuator. Now I have reduced uh, the dynamics in stock and the gripper became more gentle. Alright, now I want to show you how the gripper camera works. This is my hand. This is me. Hello. Here you can see camera working in tandem with distance sensor. I'm using GY530 laser range sensor here. Theoretically it can measure distances up to 2 meters. Distance measurements below the image are in millimeters. And now, as an example of how gripper camera can be used, I'd like to show you some machine learning experiments that I've conducted. Here I'm collecting a data set of images of different objects, which are in position when they can be grasped by the gripper. Also, I've collected a dataset of images of different backgrounds and also of different objects which are far from the gripper and cannot be grasped. You must have already guessed that I am going to train an image classifier with that images. And I am going to use PyTorch for that. This is a notebook with the code. X positive and X negative are the datasets of images, which I saved to the disk. These are the examples of positive image and negative image. Then I prepared labels for the classes and randomly split the whole dataset into train and test parts. Both train and test datasets have uh, 100 images. It's not very much, so I have decided to use image augmentation techniques to enlarge train data set a little bit. I've rotated some of the images, 
flipped them left and right, upside down, added noise, blur. Here you can see the shape of the test dataset. It still has 100 images, but the train dataset after image augmentation got 600 images. I use one layer neural network to train the classifier. The feature vector got quite big because of the size of the images. I wanted to convert all the images to grayscale to decrease this feature vector, but the result got worse. So I have decided to leave all the images as is. And this is the training procedure. So I've converted all the data into Torch tensors, loaded them to GPU. I used batch size of 100 during the training. Then goes forward pass, calculation of the loss. I'm using binary cross entropy with logits criterion here and backward pass and this is the result of the training procedure as you can see train loss gradually decreases and then stabilizes train accuracy stabilizes at the point of 92 percent test accuracy reaches 70 percent and then i save the parameters of the neural network and actually I've trained five such neural networks and each of them on a slightly differently resampled dataset. Alright, now it's time to test the classifier. Here as you can see I'm instantiating five models with saved parameters. All the models were trained on differently resampled datasets. And then I'm just going to take the picture from the camera pass it through each of the models. Each of the models will output probability of the image belonging to the positive class. And then I'll just take mean prediction and use it as a result. And if this result will be greater than 0.8, the command to grasp will be sent to the gripper and hopefully it will grasp something. preparing to take the image and the result is just as expected. Alright, this is embarrassing, we've got false positive. Well, this is false negative, but as you can see the probability is still greater than 0 0.5. Now the classifier is pretty sure that there's something between the jaws of the gripper. This must be difficult.
Well, I'm impressed that it managed to correctly classify both of these images. Alright, that's it for today. The classifier is of course far from perfect, mostly because I was too lazy to collect enough data, but still it was fun to work at it. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.